Chapter 18, Moonlight Rescue. Remember, we last left Humphrey and he was out in the wild. He was really nervous, but he was really excited. When something is thrilling, that means it's kind of exciting for him. So let's see what happens. Goldenrod moved quickly through the brush. <clears throat> I was right behind her, but oh, the grass and branches and tiny rocks tickled my whiskers, scraped my paws, and made me itchy all over. Skitter, scatter, skit. There was something else in the brush. Could it be the howler? Skitter, skitter, squeak. I was pretty sure the howler didn't squeak. Come on, Lucky, Goldenrod said. We have to help our friend Humphrey. Then I heard squeak, skitter, scat. You can help too, Gogo, she said. Soon there were about a dozen mice accompanying us, Goldenrod's brothers, sisters, and cousins. They scampered along through the underbrush as I desperately tried to keep up. Then I heard, hoot, 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 hoot. Excuse me, I said, gasping for a bit of air, but did I just hear an owl? Sure, said Goldenrod. That's why we try not to go out in the open. Good call, I agreed. And then I saw the most wonderful sight I'd ever seen. The moonlight shimmered and glimmered across the surface of the lake. The water was silvery purple. I guess that's why they call it Lake Lavender. It was beautiful. Oh, but I also felt a bad feeling deep in my tummy. Maybe Og would prefer this beautiful lake to his tabletop tank. Maybe Og was happier with the frogs in Lake Lavender than he was living next door to a hamster. Goldenrod led us to, a very, to the very edge of the water where there were tall plants and soft grasses. Here we are, she squeaked. At least, uh, I think that's what she squeaked. I could barely hear her voice over the deafening chorus of frogs. I, I never knew there were so many kinds of frogs and so many different sounds. Quank, 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 rum, 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 tuck a tuck, tuck a tuck, tuck a tuck, chirp, chirp, chirp. But I didn't hear a single boing. How can I find him? I asked Goldenrod. Call him, she said. Maybe he'll hear you. There was a nice flat rock nearby. I climbed up to the top, cleared my throat, and squeaked with all my might. Ugh! This is your friend Humphrey! Ugh! Ugh! The quanking and chirping continued. If only those big bullfrogs would stop rum rum rumming for a second. Ugh! I shrieked. Ugh! It's Humphrey! Oddly enough, the chorus suddenly became quiet enough for me to hear a clear and distinct boing. I'd know that boing anywhere. Ugh, if you'd rather stay in, at the lake where it's beautiful in the moonlight, I'll understand, I told him. But if you'd like to come back and be my neighbor again, we can lead you back. Boing, boing, was the response. My friends know the way, I continued, and the kids miss you a lot. Boing, boing, boing. Did that sound a little bit closer? I am here on the rock on the shore, I told him. I was afraid my small hamster voice might not hold up much longer. Boing, boing, Og answered. I waited and waited until I heard a familiar splashing. And then I saw him, his bright green skin shining in the moonlight, his big googly eyes gleaming, and that big old goofy grin. He was on shore, hopping toward me. Og, I missed you, I shouted. Boing, boing, he replied. So I knew he'd missed me too. Hoot, 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 hoot. Hurry, let's get back in the brush, Goldenrod said. Quietly, without another squeak, Goldenrod, Lucky, Gogo, and the others led Og and me skittering and hopping through the undergrowth on the long trek back to Robin's nest cabin. I can't thank you all enough, I told my wild friends. They squeaked, good luck, and scampered off, disappearing into the bushes. Only Goldenrod lingered for a few seconds. You are a wonderful friend to Og, she told me. You are a wonderful, wonderful friend to me, I replied. And Goldenrod, you'll be careful with that owl, won't you? Of course, she said, but Lucky can Lucky can tell you more about than that owl than I can. He was just a baby when an owl swooped down and picked him up. I gasped. Oh, no. Goldenrod nodded, but for some reason, he dropped him right away. That's how he got his name, Lucky. I shuddered a little, and she turned to leave. If I ever, ever, ever can help you, please let me know, I called after her. Thanks, she said shyly. Then, in a flash, she was gone. I looked over at my old pal, who looked tired and pale. Of course, he needed water. Luckily, luckily, there was a lovely puddle at the bottom of the steps. 
After sitting in the water a while, he looked like his old self again. I sat there with Og for the rest of the night. Neither of us said a thing. We didn't need to. When it started to get light, I told Og to stay right there. Then I slid back under the door. I knew from experience that there was no way to get back on the table, so I waited. With the loudspeaker when the loudspeaker played that awful wake-up song, the girls began to stir. As soon as I saw Miranda sit up, I began to squeak, squeak, squeak at the top of my lungs. She heard me and jumped out of bed. Humphrey, you're out of your cage, she said, dashing toward me. I was way ahead of her. I raced to the door and slid under. Come back, Miranda ran after me and opened the door. I hurried down to Og's puddle. He was still there, thank goodness. Miranda stopped short and glared. Og, that's Og, she screamed. The other robins were outside now, screaming with happiness. Gail picked, me up, picked up my cage first and then Og. I'll go get Miss Mac, Miranda took off running still in her PJs. Tell me again, Miss Mac said after Og was back in his cage and I was back in mine. Miranda told the story again. I'm afraid with all the fuss about Og, one of you forgot to lock Humphrey's cage, she said. Sorry, the robin said in unison. I felt a little guilty because they didn't have anything to be sorry about. Miss Mac pointed a finger in my direction. And you, Humphrey, were naughty to get out of your cage. Naughty? Yes. But it was well worth it to have my friend back. I guess somehow Ugg found his way back, though I can't imagine how, Miss Mac continued. But here he is, and that's all that counts. I couldn't have agreed more. Ugg and I put in a special appearance in the dining hall at breakfast that morning to loud cheers and applause. Noah got up and apologized to Ugg and to the other campers. I could tell he was really, really, really sorry. I thought I knew a lot about animals, he said. I thought that frogs belonged with frogs. But now I know some frogs belong with people. Then Hat prepared everyone for the final day of competition. Play hard, play fair, have fun, he said. And now let the games begin. I glanced over at Saya. This was the moment she'd been dreading. Surprise! She had a big smile on her face. Humans are hard to figure out, but that's what makes them so interesting. Note to self, you could know a lot, but nobody knows everything. What an exciting chapter! They got them back! That's so exciting! And now the competitions are really heating up. So the next chapter is called The Winners After Dinner.